The Penguin and the Pea by Janet Perlman. Long ago, in a faraway land, there lived a penguin prince who was very, very lonely. He wished more than anything to find a penguin princess to marry, but she had to be a real princess. He traveled far and wide to find one, and he, he met many penguins who claimed to be princesses. Some even wore crowns. But there was always something that was not quite right. One was too loud, another too giddy, this one too shy, that one plain boring. The prince was not impressed by any of them, and so he returned home weary and discouraged. The f I fear I will never find the penguin princess of my dreams, he lamented. His parents, too, had hopes of seeing their son marry a true princess, and their hearts ached to see him so unhappy. One night, there was a terrible storm. Lightning flashed on the castle walls, and wind howled through the trees. The rain came down in torrents, flooding the courtyard. Suddenly, there was a loud banging at the castle gate. Who could be out on such a night? The old king himself went to see. There's somebody coming to the castle gate. Outside the gate stood a wet and miserable penguin. Her carriage had broken down and she was seeking shelter from the storm. She claimed to be a princess, but what a dreadful sight she was. Rain streamed from her beak and her feathers were all matted. Her clothes were in tatters and her crown was caked with mud. Yet she insisted that she was a real princess. The king invited the the shivering penguin in to dry off and stay for the night. The princess shook the rain and mud from her clothes, feathers as best she could. When she removed her grubby rain flippers, enough water gushed out to make a puddle in the entranceway. The old queen pursed her beak and disapprovingly at their bedraggled guest. She does not look like a princess to me, she said to the king. Just look at those scraggly feathers, that rusty crown. The prince was intrigued by the mysterious stranger and looked forward to learning more about her. As the evening wore on, he saw that, despite everyone's first impression, she possessed a genuine beauty and a sparkling wit. In all his travels, he had never met anyone as enchanting as she. From the gentle curve of her beak down to her delicately webbed feet, she was the most perfect penguin princess he had ever seen. As for the princess, she had never before met so handsome and charming a prince. The queen could see that her son was captivated, but she was very suspicious of the princess. Thinking she was an impostor who was only after her handsome son, the queen hatched a plan to make sure their guest would not stay long. While the, prince was, while the princess was warming her feathers in front of the fire, the queen went into one of the guest chambers and had the servants remove all the bedding. She then placed a large, firm, green cabbage on the bed, and over it a flimsy, threadbare mattress. Our so-called princess will be gone by the crack of dawn after sleeping on this bed, chortled the queen. So there they are, putting a cabbage on her bed. When it came time to retire for the night, the princess was shown to her bedchamber, Oh dear, this certainly is a lumpy old bed, she thought. She tried her best to get comfortable, but all through the night she flipped and flopped and did not sleep a wink. So there she is trying to sleep on this cabbage. The next morning she said not a word about her terrible night. Like most princesses, she was too polite to complain, although everyone could see that she was exhausted. The queen thought regretfully that the princess was now too tired to travel. The storm was still raging and the princess was happy to stay at the castle and spend more time with the prince. It was a day of pure delight and whimsy. The two young penguins talked about everything and anything. They were simply enchanted with each other and the castle halls rung with joy and laughter. She surely must be a real princess, thought the prince. She is the ideal penguin for me. Here they are doing all the fun things in the castle. By the end of the day, the prince was so in love that he asked her for her, 
asked for her fin in marriage, the princess happily accepted. The prince then went to his parents to ask for their blessing. The king gave his flap of approval right away, for he could see how much love his son how much in love his son was. But the queen was not ready to welcome the newcomer into the royal family. We must be absolutely sure that this young penguin is a real princess, the queen insisted. Only a true princess is so delicate and fragile as to feel a single pea under her twenty mattresses. If she passes this test, then you will have my blessing. Now the queen was not absolutely certain that this was a precise test of being a real princess, but it was the only one she knew. Anyone could feel a cabbage under a mattress, but a pea? She hurried back to the guest chamber, removed the cabbage, and put in its place one tiny green pea. She then ordered the servants to bring 19 more mattresses to be placed on top. Finally, just to be sure, she ordered 20 heavy eider-down quilts to be added to the pile. So there they are, carrying all the mattresses up. When the princess entered the bedchamber and saw the towering bed, she was bewildered. Could this be the same bed I slept on last night? It looks very different. But all her things were there, just as she had left them, so it had to be the right room. The princess had quite a time climbing up onto the bed. When she finally reached the top, the height made her extremely dizzy. And then, once she was nestled in, she could feel something hard beneath the mattress that was causing her some discomfort. So there she is, climbing up to the top of that mattress, and the pea is way down here. In the middle of the night, as she turned restlessly from side to side, she rolled right off the bed and tumbled to the floor. She sat up and carefully adjusted her crown. Her whole body ached. Her flippers were bruised and some of her feathers were broken. She did not even try to climb back up, but huddled miserably on the floor for the rest of the night. In the morning, when the princess came down to the royal breakfast table, the queen asked, how did you sleep last night, my dear? I do hope the bed was comfortable. The princess was not sure what to say, for she did not want to complain. Don't be shy, please tell us, the queen urged. Everyone leaned closer to hear her reply. Uh, it was lovely bed, so many mattresses and quilts, the princess began, but there was something hard in it that kept me awake all night, and then... Oh, I cannot tell you how I have suffered. I am covered in bruises and I am sore all over. I knew she was a real princess, exclaimed the prince. How happy he was. From then on, the princess was recognized by everyone in the kingdom to be a genuine royalty, for she had felt a tiny pea right through the 20 mattresses and 20 eiderdown quilts. The queen gave her consent, and the prince and princess were soon married and lived flappily ever after. As for the pea, it was put on display in a special glass case in the Royal Penguin Museum. It remains there to this day, if it hasn't been lost, and so ends a true story. So there's the pea right there. All right, so we are going to make a little penguin puzzle for our craft today. So it's fairly quick. All you need is some empty sticks. So some craft sticks, the wider craft sticks, or if you only have popsicle sticks, that's fine too. And we're going to line them up side by side. So I'm using about seven. You can use more or less, whatever you have. And I'm going to even them out nice and straight. And then I'm going to take some tape and I'm going to tape the back of them together. So I'm going to use some strips of tape and I'm going to tape them together tightly. Just so that when we draw our decorations on there they don't slip apart. 
So that is our first step. And it doesn't need to be perfect because it's a puzzle. We're going to take them apart when we're all done. So now they're all attached. And then I'm just going to go ahead and draw my penguin on there. So if you feel like you need to, you can use something that's round to trace around for the penguin's head. So he's got a round head and then he kind of goes down in an oval shape. And then he's got his two flippers. You need to leave a white section for his belly and then his decorations. So he's got a triangle nose and a bow tie. So you can do the best job that you can drawing your penguin. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to show you what mine starts out looking like. So there's a circle. And then I'm just going to go two lines down to the side. And then at the corner. At the corners, I'm going to make some triangles for his flippers. And then I'm just going to draw it back down to the center for his body. So that's the general shape. And, and because we're not going to color in the eye part, I'm going to draw those on before I color in the rest of my penguin. So I did some eyes, a nose, and his bow tie. So I'm going to fill in around, and there's his belly. So I'm going to fill in around all of these things with black, and then I'm going to go back after and I'm going to fill in my center. So I'm going to use my marker, and I'm just going to color as if there's no sticks. I'm just going to pretend that they aren't even there, so that when we are doing our picture it's nicely connected. And that will help us to make it into a puzzle. So you're going to go through and do all your black. So that's what I have so far. I'm going to go up into his head area. And I'm going to go around all those features that I drew on there. So you need to make sure that every popsicle stick has some kind of decoration on it that connects onto the next popsicle stick so that when you take it apart you can put it together and you have uh, some clues as to how to put your puzzle together. Alright, so you do your best coloring. And just for time I'm kind of being quick here. but So that's what my beginning part looks like. And then I'm going to add the orange for the nose. And I'm going to add my green for my bow tie. And then I'm going to give him some little pupils inside his eyes for his Alright. So that's the beginning. And then I'm just going to use a couple of decorations along the sides. And you want to make sure that your decorations go in between some of the sticks so that it'll help you with your sequence of your puzzle. So I'm just going to draw some snowflakes for our penguin <coughs> and some stars. And if you want to use some of the <coughs> theme from the book, you can do that as well. You could draw a penguin on a big bed. So once you're all done, you just peel your tape off the back. So I'm going to do that. <coughs> and then you mix up your sticks and you put them all back together and you try to figure out the sequence of your puzzle to make your penguin. So that is your penguin puzzle.